<coughs> right, stupid people. Right, I want to just do this bit of a video because people don't understand the so like the reality of what you do to the people that you do meet on the streets. And I want to talk about stupid people. I don't mean the stupid people that struggle at school. That's not what I'm on about. I'm on about those people that are massively, massively intellectual, that have got degrees coming out of their ass with, you know, uh, human resources and anecritical the de development processing and all this, I know what a dodecahedron is. And, you know, <laughs> I don't even know what it makes myself. Um, but the kind of person that lives three miles from home but can't get home about his sat nav. And then when you're blocking road due to a kiddie fail, little, little boy dead in road, all roads blocked off. Car pulls up to you, stood there saying, excuse me, officer, yes, can I help you? I need to get through. Well, you can't, there's a, there's a, there's a dead boy in road. Oh, oh, you know, it's like, well, it's so selfish. I need to get, well, where do you live? Well, other side of those hills there. Well, how long have you lived there? 39 years. What, and you only know this way home? You don't know any other way. Well, my sat nav takes me this way every single day. You know, that sort of stupidity. We've had it where we've had a truck on its side with 50,000 like chickens on the floor, big Arctic lorry. Officer, officer, what's going on? Uh, well, what do you think's going on? Oh, I don't know. So what are you here for? Do you know what I mean? Well, I, I come to see if I can help. Well, it's a shark attack. Shark attack. And you can see him looking around for a shark. And you're like, it's a fucking truck on its side full of chickens. You know, we've had it where we've said it's an alien invasion and you can see him start looking up to the sky. Obviously, what's going on? Alien invasion? They're like, having a bit of a look around and you're like, are you that stupid? Are you that naive? But we've also got those, the, the, the people that are that are on there. We, I have had it once where um, a very educated bloke came up to me and it were a motorbike smash and this lad were laying on the floor and his lad were, were like smashed at side. It had completely like bone were coming out of boot and that sort of thing. Uh, and it, it will knows where I think it's more not stupid I think it's just more nosy bastard syndrome you know they've got no else to do wife's at home baking buns for WI or whatever it is and that sort of thing and all I've got to do is go to a local town council meeting and uh, it pulled up and officer can I help can I help in any way and I said yeah just get a biro and go do a tracheotomy on that lad over there I've got a little knife if you want to use that you don't have to be such a dick about it he said well, yeah but what do you want me to do? You know, what's your background in policing? What's your background in life saving? Or, well, well it, it, there's not, they just basically want to get stuck in because they've got nothing better to do with life. But not only the rich people, I was not so, I'm not, I'm categorizing you, so I do apologize for that. Not only the really educated, that people that don't sometimes have a clue what's going on, but you've got it the other way around where there's some so stupid people, it's untrue. So I'll give you this one as well. So we're on patrol, I'm lying about that because it's really early in the morning, we're not on patrol, we're at work and we're sat there, knackered in car. Call comes in Sunday morning, uh, the suspicious car, we know this car's been outstanding stolen for ages and it's a blue Golf, uh, Golf R, which is a fast car and woman's walk dog and she says, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a car parked on the street and windows are all steamed up. Um, it looks like people in the street, uh, sorry, in the car are all asleep. So I've had a look at number plate and it looks like all number plate's been taped over and there's, there's different bits making different words for different letters. So they read out this number plate and it would basically say, just say BT51 TLX, it would BT52 TLB. They'd obviously masked it all over. So as soon as they said registration plate, we knew it were a stolen car. We knew it were a car used in burglaries. So we all started making his way to the scene, but we, we went like turn the sirens off, so we went a bit covert coming into our area. Um, and it turned out what these burglars had done, they'd got a stolen car, the burglar house, got all, all the loot from the burglar in the car, Mrs. Miggins's purse, her, her husband Dennis's wallet and all this sort of thing, laptops and everything else they need. And they said, right, we're going to burgle the house over there, let's wait until they go to sleep. Uh, and they've nodded off in car. So there's four burglars, balaclavered up, laid in his car asleep, at like five, six in the morning, on a Sunday morning in his beautiful luxury estate in the middle of nowhere and you think you're not going to get seen. So we've all like got on radio, formulated this plan and we've all drove his cars, front, sides, and literally pinned this car in, um, crept up to the car and then just literally smashed windows on the car and <laughs> give him fright of life. Now this lad woke up quickly, driver woke up quickly, put it in a gear and tried setting off and he's just pinned in by about eight cars around and there's about 30 bobbies there all climbing over each other who dragged these lads out of the car, these burglars. Uh, at one point, I think they were a burglar, halfway through a window at car, someone had opened car door and someone's pulling his feet, someone's pulling his head. 
So he's like, uh, uh, so get out, get out, get out. I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying, but they're pulling his feet, they're pulling his arms, and it's door frames, so like cutting him in two. It's getting that bad at one point. They're all there, all in car. They got sentenced to, I can't remember how many, I think they got sentenced to three years for the two burglaries because the one person went back, I think it were a girl who was middle seat passenger in back, and she were holding all the laptop in purses. So and they were all just asleep. Now, I don't mean to sound funny, but is that stupid to me? Or is it stupid to or everyone else? You just don't go burgling in a house, do you? You don't go st in a stolen car, then wear balaclavas and fall asleep at side of the road on a Sunday morning in a luxurious estate in a, in a car with false number plates on. It's just, and I just I just get baffled by the amount of people that we deal with that. Every, the 95% of the population we deal with are all brilliant, but you get the odd one uh, that just pushes your buttons the wrong way. And then when they push my buttons, I react massively. I come back tenfold. I mean, we've been at, we've been at um, a smash towards Wakefield and there's Emily Moore mast. Have you seen that? And then one bloke went, well, what's that? Obviously, it's Blackpool Tower. So I went, I'm going to go get my kids and take them over. I've heard it's Blackpool. I didn't think it was that close. So he's taking his kids over. Emily Moore mast, it's Blackpool Tower. I mean, come on, get a grip of yourself. Awesome. What are some common stupid things that people get arrested for? Um, a lot of them are for stopping a car and do you have insurance? No, I don't have insurance. Yeah, no, 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 I don't have a license, no. You don't have a license? Well, it's a stolen car. Why well, I won't have a license, I'm in a stolen car. And you pass your side of him, shut up, don't say out. And the driver's like, but he told me to say that he's stolen it, but I'm driving it home. So the driver is always the stupid one because the driver's the one that gets paid to drive the car home from the burglaries because he's got no criminal record, so he's going to get off of it. So it's always the driver that will sit aside of his mates who are all burglars, and burglars will say, right, drive this car. So there's that, there's the driver's always said, um, have you got anything on you shouldn't do? Uh, I've got no insurance. Have you got anything on you shouldn't do? I've got no license. I didn't ask for, yeah, I've got some cocaine in my pocket. It's that sort of thing. It's the people that just dob themselves in. It's the people that dob the mates in, not knowing that the fact that they've got to, um, they always say like, we don't lie, we, we're no snitches, we're not a grass or all like that. And as soon as you get them behind closed doors, they all start crying. And you all start blabbing, who will be? What are you told me to do it? But when we stop cars, we stop cars with burglars in. And drivers, a lot of drivers just turn around and say, but he's told me to drive it, he's just stolen it, he's told me to drive it. And you can see it personally, passengers say, don't say that. You're not meant to say all about a solicitor. But they do, they, they do. We've had them with weapons, we've had them with, have you got a weapon? No, no, we've just did it behind bush. What have you did it behind bush for? Because he stabbed someone or he's used it over there, so he's passed it to me and we've used it behind bush. Um, but yeah, it's all the stuff that are the RTCs really. It's the RTC thing that's really boiled my piss over the years. It's the, it's, the, it's the people that want to slow down when they're in upper sides of carriageway and want to use the phones just to take a photo, but they're not, you, you, you're not only on a dual carriageway, you're stopping it fast lane of a dual carriageway and you've also got a mobile phone on you and you're taking photos of police officers scene and you think you're not going to get prosecuted. Fucking idiots. Sorry. How do you remain patient with people? Um, I think stupider the better. Uh, <laughs> and and I, do, I do remain patient with these people a lot of time. Um, but it's when they come over with such a stupid question. And it, we always, all Bobby, all Bobby's all over England that I watch this. They'll all be at a scene, they'll all be blocking road, and they'll all be sat with their oppo, and they're watching this car, four o'clock in the morning, coming out of nowhere, it comes all over hills. Comes out, comes right up to edge of the car, and it stops. And Oppo goes, "Stupid question time." And then you're like, "Yeah, I know, I know." Walks up, knocks on the window. Officer, can I get through? Do you, do you think? Well, what point? You, can you see the roads blocked off? You've just gone through four road close signs. There's not another current road. We've got a tanker on its side. Here. You can see. It's, can I get through? Well, no, you can't. Well, which way can I go? Well, I don't know where you're going. It's that sort of thing. And you always get these stupid questions. And that's what I think irritates all Bobbies. And every single Bobby will be there watching going, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. We've all had it. Stupid question time. I've got a question. Go on. Related to that. You um, better not be stupid. No, no, no. If you ask a stupid question, I'm just going to slap you. Um, <laughs> from watching the clips on uh, Interceptors, you've got to have a level of humour as well. Yeah, you've got to. Within your patience. Yes. Yeah. I remember like the, the lad that made it from Dave in the white Golf, uh, sorry, white uh, Audi S3 and he thought he could drive. So Dave's got a nose on with him and he's made it from Dave. And he's gone up on a Queen's Road and he's, he's smashed it up into railings. And it's like, it's a serious job. I mean, 
we, we could have been serious there. And the first thing we said, we've got this, you can't buy that there. And he was like, you could see the look on his face going, is he going to give me a ticket? And it's like that, you've got to, you've got to have a laugh with people. Is that the guy who, who borrowed the car off his brother? Oh, yeah. Like a, and it's on its side, and, and uh, baby Ben went, bit of tea, could bring that out. There's no axle on back at car. You've got off a laugh with But they're, they're, in this, they're in this world where they've mucked up, they've done something stupid, but then they're thinking, like, how, how much more stupid can I get? And then we're just coming in and pointing out, well, you are a stupid person. You are thick. You mean you've made a front police, you haven't even made it 45 yards and you've crashed your car. You go on, give it a bit of a good go. If you're going to do it, do it. But if you're not going to do it, you know what I mean? Just give it up as a bad job, but it, it couldn't drive a car, it couldn't handle a car. And then not only that, like you said, he's, you're trying to give him a bit of a ribbon and he's not even taking an answer either. So if you're going to be in it, prepare to take a ribbon, especially if I see you. And were there times where you had to try not to laugh with people? Oh, yeah, there's been all sorts. There's been, there's been jobs where we've locked people up and we've been pulling them through the street and because you know, the, the biters and spitters and stuff, and pants have all come off. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So you, you're dragging them around with pants around their ankles and there's, there's been one or two people that have soiled themselves and you, I mean there's, there's been one or two cases where we've gone to a woman drugged up on ruler lane and she's running around naked and you know you're like Whoa, oh. but no this is like your grandma's best friend this is someone you want to see naked um, and they're running around streets and then they're trying to kiss you and lick your face and you're thinking oh god you know, I wouldn't mind if it was someone really attractive but they're, they're not Um so, but there's been all, there's been all sorts of jobs where yeah, but, but I think one or two things that have uh, shoplifters. You get shoplifters that go out and steal stuff, but you're going to steal stuff that's not worth stealing. If you're going to steal it, they need to be able to steal it. But they're, they're going in and nicking a, a pack of biscuits, and you th you're breaking law for a pack of biscuits. I mean, are you that thick? We've had people that have broken into places and can't get out. We had one lad um, with a lad called Ross Epton, and. Uh, <laughs> We've had a, we, um, in Ecclesville, went for, to a burger in progress at, um, at Chemist. <laughs> and then uh, we get there and door smashed. This is like 30 minutes after alarm's gone off. And when you get there, so if you're a burglar, you've gone out, haven't you? Yeah, so we're at, we're at the burglary and there's an hole in the glass and he, he can't find out where he's gone out of the, 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 the glass. We get there, Ross goes through the window and then we're having a bit of a dance mucking about outside. And I think CCTV's watching us, so I'm mean, like, you're just having a bit of fun. Well, oh, do a dance or whatever. So Ross is doing a dance, and then directly behind him, his burglar stands up. So I'm like, Ross, behind you. And Ross is in the window of this chemist shop doing his dance. Behind you. And Ross goes, what? He says, behind you. So Ross turns around, there's a bloke, burglar stood there. So they start going at it, and there's all pseudocrem going up in air, and all, you know, all stuff that makes your feet smell better. And Ross is rolling. I couldn't get in because I I'm a bit of a fat lad at the time. And I think this oh, we're only a year big. So Ross is rolling on. But if our burglars break in, it broke into a premises, you couldn't get back out. What are you breaking into premises for and you can't get back out? Stop being stupid. Do you know what I mean? Just don't be thick. It's be like a snatch. They rob that they rob the uh, the bookies. Oh yeah, and they're pushing up the door. It's a bull do you do you know what these bookies? Yeah. <laughs> Bulletproof Tony. Yeah. Why's he got bullet? He's got teeth for bullets. <laughs> Open her up, have you? It's not a tin of baked beans. <laughs> <laughs> this is my new book, Cortal Tango 2-3. It's available from Amazon now, and click the link below if you want one. Thank you.